uh, points there. Okay, great. So I'm going to put, I'm going to fire the recording back up and we will, um, we will press on. So one question for Owen, uh, have you determined a time for the next training uh, session for your, um, for us yet, or are we just in the talking phase of planning phase of that yet? Uh, you mean in terms of doing the workshop with this team? Yes. Uh, that's my follow up is to work with Peter to work directly uh, with you all to find the right schedule for that. So, okay, do we want to give you our names and in contact information today now, or do you want to? I, Chrissy, I have all of that, so we're, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll be able to, we, to do that directly. Really want to fast track this. Uh, well, my I'm, suggestion is two weeks from today. Good. Well, I, I have something to say. I raised my hand, but I don't know. If I'm you sorry, I can't it. see it. Go ahead. Uh, no, I. there are several people that are not here that are key to this body. Uh, Shanae uh, being a, a co-chair and uh, Pastor Kelly. Uh, um, I mean, can we make phone calls? What, what, what do you guys want me to do? I can call Shanae. Um, you know, what, what are we going to do about that? Please call Shanae. And if anyone else knows of someone that was here that's not, Let's reach out to them and see if we can get them back online. Okay, I sent the email back out to folks to, to try to get everybody back into uh, um, to get everybody back in. But clearly, we have we lost some of the folks. All right, thank you. Marvin, how would you like to proceed? We lost the momentum of the meeting too. We lost a bit of momentum and we were having a good one. So clearly uh, we st what's left is, and I would like everyone to get back on because we were getting to a really good point where we got to discuss what we wanted to be doing as a committee uh, after we heard some of the updates from the ongoing uh, bodies of work from the RHA. Uh, the primary ones have been the ones that people have asked the most questions about uh, RV, uh, RV workshop, the RV work group, uh, emergency housing vouchers, severe weather, um, and other work that's going on at the time. So have we had other folks join? Once again, I'm limited in my ability to monitor. No, nobody else has joined yet, Marvin. I just okay. see the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 of us. Uh, actually, there, there are 11 board members here? Uh, 11 board members, yes, and seven attendees. We still maintain a quorum then. So would you like to, uh, does the group wish to proceed? Well, we've got nine board members, Daniil and Peter and Owen. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. No, no. That, okay, nine board members. Peter's taking up two spots. So actually, we're <laughs> peppered all <laughs> oh, over the squares here. You know what? I see that. I don't know. I don't know why that would be. Maybe it had to do with your, uh, your not being able to get on camera earlier. You're taking up too much bandwidth, dude. You know what? I think I, I'm not. <laughs> I was me. Now I'm the host. So you better be careful because I can. I know, uh, but you'll, you'll click me off again. That's OK. My cat's. No, no, no. I'm not doing that. OK, so I, I think we can, since there were no more voting items, we can proceed without quorum. And, you know, I sent out another. Um, uh, I sent out another email to just with, you know, resent the link out to folks. Um, but I, I'm not exactly sure. I apologize. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but, um, uh, you know, clearly we will, we, we got to make sure that we don't disrupt the meetings to this extent in the future because we lost, you know, most of the members and a lot of momentum. But we do have, you know, a group of, of some of the membership and we do have some, you know, the attendees look like they were able to get back on. So um, uh, once again, I offer, uh, why don't we continue with just uh, some updates from 
the KCRHA. Yeah. So uh, I was all right. So I wanted to appreciate. Thanks for the for affirming the committees. There is um, there's certainly work uh, in front of all of them. I wanted to give, so you mentioned the emergency housing voucher program that is um, running at, uh, we've almost, we got about 1400 referrals from the provider agencies that um, that signed up uh, the, the uh, memorandum of, of agreement that we had. Um, that is about 84% of where we were trying to get to by this time to ensure that we had all the vouchers uh, issued and, and leased. The, the public housing agencies have issued about 1,100 vouchers, and about 100 of them have leased so far. So, you know, as we could have predicted, the leasing again is running, you know, well behind where we want it to be, but the number of vouchers issued is is closing in on you know the number that we were that we were projecting to get to. So it's not it's not at one hundred percent of what we what we want to get to to lease all the vouchers within the shortened time frame. But we should get everybody in by the time we need them to be in, which is um, September of this year. Um, the group of folks, and I will send out to the committee, Robin had asked this question, I'll send out to the committee, the list of organizations that signed the memorandum of understanding or the memorandum of agreement with, um, with the KCRHA to participate in the emergency housing voucher program. We had initially um, so, um, you know, circulated that to the contract providers that the city and county had and then expanded very rapidly to include a lot of providers who are not publicly funded. So it includes, you know, a number of smaller organizations, a number of organizations that had not previously carried public work. And there's a really rich mix of, of very small organizations, some that are very focused on, um, you know, specific at-risk populations. So uh, there was a a, a large number of those folks. And that, um, that group was also included when, um, uh, Owen circulated the list of, of organizations that, uh, to, to participate in those work, work groups and those focus groups. So both the contract providers and the other folks. Christine, I see your hand. I'm going to bring it back to equity. Did we make sure that groups that are not represented, you know, um, very, and there's a lot in our community, sex workers, you know, a lot of different organizations. Did we make sure we hit, uh, you know, hit some? Does that make sense? Yes. So we, we worked with the coalition ending gender based violence. We worked, you know, we brought in um, rest representing folks who are, um, you know, fleeing human trafficking. We worked with, um, you know, we worked with gender justice and, you know, uh, lavender rights. We worked with a lot of different organizations to, to bring in folks that are that are really underrepresented among uh, other kind of communities. So um, in, in addition to that, we used a an algorithm to make sure that small organizations were not um, displaced by large organizations effectively. So we, we, you know, we gave an, a, bump, a bump to the organizations that are smaller, we gave a bump to organizations that are BIPOC, let, buy and for those that are LGBTQIA, buy and for folks who are in the, in the intimate partner violence and, and uh, in the coalition, any gender-based violence. Those organizations got an additional bump in terms of the number of uh, referral slots that we provided. Uh, so that we, we used a, an equity-based referral algorithm to make sure that like there was extra space for organizations that would not otherwise have um, you know, participated. In that way, you know, so I'll, sh you know, you share out all the different, you know, organizations that were, um, that were represented in that. And, you know, some of the larger organizations that are publicly funded came back and said, hey, we, we didn't get as many vouchers referral slots as we thought. And said, well, this is how we did it. And, um, you know, in the end, I think there was a, there was a mix of folks who were, um, you know, who got referrals, but there was, there was a, a really rich, um, mix of different kinds of organizations that are representing um, smaller, um, you know, at-risk populations that might not otherwise have gotten or were not currently publicly funded, including quite a number of indigenous uh, organizations. 
can we get a list and see who that was? Yeah, I'll send that. I'll send that out. Because I'm thinking of places like the Ark. Did they get any of them? Um, I, I don't, I, it will take me a minute to look it up. So I will, I'm happy to send the list out. To yeah. Folks. To make sure that, you know, we're not missing. Cause that by us having the eyes on there, we might spot, you know, this group that, oh, uh, we didn't think about, you know, that kind of thing. And there, there were a number of organizations that we sent the agreement to that, that in the end did not, you know, ultimately sign it. So, you know, there, it, it's not, it's not that everybody, agree, you know, agreed to participate, but, and there are some organizations that signed the agreement that have not yet, you know, sent referrals and we need to, you know, to work with those folks. Most folks though, have sent in the referrals. Some have, have you know, sent all the referrals that they had. Some are, are still working on it. But I, we'll, sh we'll share that out with the group, okay? Um, I mentioned that one of the key pieces of work that the KCRHA has right now is integrating all of the contracts that the city and the county had addressing homelessness. So that is, you know, there's a, a, a large number of contracts that the, that the city had led. There were, you know, similar number of contracts that the county had led. There's a group of contracts that are the COC grants. And as I indicated in my last email, uh, 13 of those have come to the K, KCRHA already. The rest of them are going to be coming over time. So most of them will come in the in the future and the and the permanent supportive housing contracts which represents that's the bulk of the portfolio those are going to be coming in the future so we're working all of those are currently sitting with the with the county sorry marvin go ahead no really quickly just following up on that how does that impact the program review performance and actual funding for those programs that receive hud yeah, so it will, so we're going to have to, so the funding will not change. The grants are what they are and they'll get, you know, they'll get the funding that they have. And so, you know, it's essentially our name on the application, our, the, the grant comes in and is, um, sorry, let me mute my other instance. I don't know why, I don't know what that is, but um, our name, wow, I, this is not me on here three times. I just want to point out, I don't know, because they're logging in maybe through my link and um, my apologies. Um, but the, um, the, uh, the application, so the grant, we are the, we are the grantee and their subrecipient has exactly the same, you know, essentially contact content to their grant, right? So, what, what will change, of course, is that as the collaborative lead and the, you know, and the applicant, you know, the collaborative applicant for these grants and the, we have responsibility for program monitoring. Those are all things that we've got to, that we've got to put forward under the system performance piece of the work that the continuum has to identify how, what are the values that we want to monitor folks. Obviously, the grants have to be maintained according to what HUD standards are. That's true. And on top of that, we as a continuum have a responsibility to uphold the vision of our local continuum and you know, ensure that what we want incorporated into the work that, that, the, uh, that the continuum of cancer care grants are performing is, you know, is incorporated into that work. And so that you know, what standards we use those are all um, those are all things that we have to to build out in the future, Marvin. So we're we're in, we're inheriting a group of of uh, grants that are you know they're going to operate the way they have operated, and we have responsibility for to make sure that you know the, those operating standards are in alignment with the vision of the of the continuum of care. Board. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so. All of those contracts that I mentioned, and the and the you know the vast majority of them, of course, are those city and county local contracts. Those all started up under the KCRHA January one. There are two hundred and sixty five or sixty seven agreements out, uh, you know, with the providers. They're in there. We're we have them within our our new grants management system. Uh, 50 something contractors looking at those grants, making sure that they have that the contracts have what they need to, to have. Those are all in the, in a process of approval that will go through 
and um, the service providers will start invoicing us in February this month for the, the work that started. <coughs> so that work is all underway. And, you know, then of course there are a few new pieces that are, that, you know, come up here and there um, through the, through local funding. And, um, and then of course, you know, on an annual basis, we've got to prepare for next year's continuum of care NOFA. So, you know, th that cycle pauses for a minute after the application goes forward, and then we got to pick it back up again and start preparing for, uh, you know, for the, for next year's NOFA. Um, on the um, on the sort of structure of the of the KCRHA, we are hiring up as rapidly as possible. As you can see, Daniel Baismeyer is a new colleague for um, of mine. That she is the chief community impact officer, and that role has responsibility for our uh, you know sort of uh, evaluation and and understanding how our our. Uh, you know, systemic measures work and, and what, you know, what, what performance should look like and, and what's, what's actually, uh, what, what the, you know, the information infrastructure that we have looks like. So, um, I don't know, Danielle, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Thanks for the intro, Peter. Um, and uh, I'm glad to be here today. Thank you for inviting me in. Marvin, we met a little bit uh, uh, earlier. Um, yeah, as Peter said, it's, and I am in week two um, uh, <laughs> at the agency. Um, uh, so uh, excited to meet you at least uh, early on. Um, as Peter mentioned, I'm the Chief Community Impact Officer, so work with Owen. Um, and yeah, our team is really um, set out to, among other things, including the um, point in time count that Owen talked about today, really helping to work with you all to figure out how we're going to define what success looks like and how we're going to measure it um, and checking it about um, how we're doing um, over the course of the year and course correcting where I needed. Um, prior to uh, joining the um, RHA here, I was actually working at the Seattle Housing Authority. So when Peter was bringing the, um, the emergency housing vouchers up, um, just worked in this space just in a different capacity. Um, but again, really excited to um, be here at the RHA and really excited to be um, working closely with you all. Uh, right, thank welcome. you. A um, couple other um, uh, notable uh, senior team members at the KCRHA. Katara Jordan has joined us as ombudsperson. She's eager to come in and uh, talk through that role with, um, with the advisory committee. And uh, Shea Martinez came over from public health as our director of health initiatives, um, which obviously there's, a, there's an important intersection, not just with the pandemic, but with um, you know, folks who have more complex health needs. What was that, Shea um, Martinez? We, that's right. Yay. <laughs> um, me too. Yeah, I feel the same way. Um, the, um, so we're currently staffed at 42, I think 41 staff. I think there are a dozen or so open positions um, and then maybe another dozen or so that have not been posted yet. Um, in the, on the programs division, as I indicated earlier, uh, Nawishta My Night Gun joined uh, program division as the deputy chief program officer. I felt grateful for her willingness to throw in with us. And um, we have filled out all of the management seats. Um, we have Nicole Scott joining as a program performance manager from, uh, she, she's coming over from Compass or came over from Compass, uh, Kelsey Beckmeyer came over from DESC, um, and that is our, we still are, are hiring our uh, staff positions, but the management team is, um, is complete. And, um, uh, you know, so we're, we are attempting to staff up as fast as possible with, you know, with, you know, and, and I've been really encouraged by the, um, by the folks who've raised their hand and, and shown willingness to, to join in with us. I think the absorbing the contracts that we got from the city and county is the main piece of work that the program division is looking at right this second. In addition to that, of course, as I indicated, we have a responsibility going forward to look to do a complete system redesign. That is um, a body of work that we're going to work with you all on. And, and as I said, the other stakeholders, we have a responsibility to build out what our equity based procurement process will look like that, you know, for once we, you know, once we know what we're going to um, reprocure that um, procurement process also has to be clear and equitable 
um, and provide access for smaller organizations that have not yet had an opportunity to participate in public funding. And that's one of the key things that's, that's in front of us. So those three things are, you know, the, the sort of core responsibilities for, um, for the KCRHA uh, going forward. And uh, Marvin, was there another topic that you wanted to cover? Yeah. There are three. Go uh, ahead. Would love an update on the philanthropy work that's going on on behalf of the KCRHA, uh, that work group and its outreach with uh, for philanthropy. Uh, second was the RV work group, which we've hopefully will at some point uh, be able to offer more to. And last but not least, uh, severe weather or other intermittent sheltering option work group and building a plan that can sit on the book shelf until it's needed, pulled out and then used. Yeah. Um, so let me, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, I'm gonna have to ask you on the philanthropy side. There are I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you mean by philanthropy work group. So there is a, we have a, there's a, there is the external partners group exists. Yeah, this is, I mean, that's a body that's, that existed prior to the KCRHA coming into existence. It Correct. is, um, it is, you know, it is, it is separate from us. Um, if you, I, what I, I, I'm not exactly sure what, um, what you're maybe next month, it, it used to fall yeah. under the name of care. There was that piece. It was kind of like the CEA. It worked upwards and we got some understanding of what partners we were working with out in the community businesses and other ways in which to fund the efforts around, uh, uh, Homelessness. Well, okay. well, continuum of care. Not back back then. It was just continuum of care. However, I know it exists. I know it's up and working. It just simply we haven't heard anything from that group ever. You know, okay. it didn't disappear. It was one of the carryovers from uh, the last iteration of our body. Got you. Okay, so I. Um, don't, I don't, you know, we don't oversee the external partners group, but I will, I will reach out to building changes and to the external partners group and, and see if I can get an update from, you know, as to what's going on with them. Okay. So those are both external stakeholders to the KCRHA, just from a, you know, from the way that, that um, and they don't function in my, the way I see it, you know, the way that, for example, the subcommittees of the COC function. But they're they are you know they're, they're sort of external stakeholders. So that is one one set of stakeholders that is, we're coordinating with our. Uh, and I also want to identify that we have our subregional planning manager Alexis Mercedes Rink, who is meeting with, for example, you know the coalitions of city managers and the other folks that are out in you know the other parts of the community. Alexis has presented on you know the subregional planning work. I, I you know the, and the, you, this body has asked for periodic updates. I was going to have her come and speak to subregional planning next month if that works for you guys. Um, you mentioned the second one was vehicular residency group, and that's a that's a working group that was uh, stood up in response to you know, concerns basically that, you know, were raised about about that particular population and, you know, making sure that folks um, have been, that their needs are being addressed. For example, in there's an intersection with severe weather, making sure that, you know, that there is a an identification of the needs of, of folks ex who are living in vehicles when there is severe weather so that they are not left out of outreach and other connection work that is built into um, to that body of uh, that working group. So that working group has been meeting on a weekly basis. They have a set of recommendations, which I'd like to bring back. Um, I can circulate the, the draft rec you know, rec uh, recommendations to, to, the, uh, to the advisory committee. And just like, you know, there, it's been a, a very fruitful um, body, I think. Um, Bill, um, Bill's volunteering to, to update on that as well. But um, okay. do you want to? Yeah, he's he's posted in the 
chat that he can yep. update on VR, but I don't know that he can chat with us because he's not a, a participant as a panelist. Yeah. You Marvin, what do you, do you think? Do you want to have you want to have an update from Bill? Yeah, we have time. We have the time. We're not pushed pushed for time. Bill, I'm pulling you in as a panelist. If you have a second to to just give an update. Yeah, uh, sure. Thank you. I can I can keep it brief um, and give you an overview, which I think um, Naomi can also forward to this group, as you know, Peter, uh, some of the paper that's been circulating, which is uh, a lot. Um, but we've broken into, um, we've been meeting since I guess the beginning of November and we were a little behind the curve on severe weather um, and we did align with Alexis, <clears throat> but it's an ongoing group that we're calling um, emergency response. So we also know that we've had fires and summer smoke and other issues that affect people and vehicles. Um, so I'll just give you the breakdowns. We've had an interim infrastructure work group. We're looking for safe lots and safe zones. Uh, places off the street. The safe zones actually would be on the street, but they would be set aside as groupings of maybe six RVs and case management and uh, put them, uh, negotiate to get people into cooperating to be exiting uh, their vehicles. Um, if people are in a derelict vehicle, we will probably go and try to move them out of that as swiftly as possible into whatever we can create the way it is happening for the removals, largely in Seattle, where there has to be shelter available. If people are in a moderately uh, conditioned RV, they'll go to a safe lot. And for those that are in a really nice RV, we're gonna try to find a place in mobile home parks, maybe offer some kind of a voucher if they need it to get in. Because some people just, just wanna keep living in it. And if it's an adequate RV, we don't wanna take them out of it. We just want them off the street. Um, so, so we're kind of staggering that just based on the condition that people are in. So we have an infrastructure work group. We're, we're I think RHA has engaged a real estate person to look for sites. Um, Karina O'Malley and I are the head of that. We're already recording sites. I was out visiting Woodland Park yesterday and walking the entire park and actually found a site that we might be able to convince parks to give us a part of. But so that's going to be uh, another is immediate needs. In other words, what can help keep people safe and stable? You know, uh, do they need food? Do they need uh, blankets right now? Do they need propane for an indoor heater? Um, another one's outreach. Can we coordinate outreach across all the people who are doing it? Um, Reach has a lot of people on the street. They are now reaching out to vehicle residents, which they didn't do intentionally before. Can we align our protocols on how we do it? Exchange our resources until we educate RHA to put them all on our contracts so everybody's got the, the resources they need. Or, or start their own little bank of contract needs. Uh, we have an advocacy committee. Right now on the table is the Long versus Seattle Supreme Court decision, uh, which you know, changed the nature of, um, of a vehicle to being a, 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 a place of habitation that, that before wasn't. And now our RVs are supposed to be treated differently by impound lots, but none of that is happening. In fact, during this meeting, I just wrote the attorney general the legislature's not looking at it. We're gonna to try to get the attorney general to look at it. And we've got an advocacy, we've got chairs to each of these subcommittees. And then the last one is emergency response, which is largely winter, uh, winterizing. We've already spent 5,000 of RHA money on winterizing supplies for people in vehicles. Uh, Lisa has offered another 5,000. I probably didn't tell Peter about that yet, but nevertheless, <laughs> um, we're trying to make sure no one uh, dies in their vehicle. We had one person die during the most severe weather last month. Um, we don't wanna see that happen again. Um, and we're not really, uh, we've never been in the flow uh, up until the start of the RHA that the rest of the outreach has been under with funding or responses coordinated. So this is a radical change. We've already had the National Alliance to End Homelessness call us to find out what we're doing because nobody else knows how to do this either. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll stop there unless there's any specific questions. I don't want to take up all your time. But as I said, Naomi is actually currently circulating a Google Doc on the safe zones so we can begin to put in place, which may be our most, our swiftest response. I mean, I mean, you know, we're talking weeks before we may start some of those safe zones. Um, if we can coordinate the, re the assets who need to do this. Um, wow. And we have to be in dialogue with the city. This is in Seattle now. But the group is regional. I'll, I'll say that. Uh, Paul Tan, who's RHA's sub-regional staff, pointed me to RVs down between Kent 
and Auburn on unincorporated King County property. So I may go visit them and say, hey, how would you like to be a little nest of RVs? And we'll try to get a case manager in here and get you the trash containers, but also put you into the queue to get into HMIS or exit the vehicle if unless it's adequate to stay in long term. I, I mean, I'm, I know I'm talking a lot and throwing a lot at you, but um, it, it really is a moving target to not use a, to use a bad pun. Hmm. Um, and, and we're really trying to go with harm alleviation, but also getting people to cooperate toward getting into something better, um, which we know right now is not waiting for them. Housing is not waiting for enough people right, right now. On. Wow, Bill, Thanks what a too, model Bill. you're building. Thank you. Thank you for all the good um, work you're doing. I, there's, a, there's a lot of people on this. Na Naomi can give you the list. Um, I'm very impressed with uh, the cooperation of everybody. Uh, Naomi is easily overwhelmed by the scope of this. Um, we've already asked RHA, maybe we need a dedicated staff person for this alone, uh, who's got a foot in each world. You know, the admin understands that and the resources and then understands the streets because we may drive Naomi crazy. Uh, I don't, really don't want to do that. I don't um, think you're, I don't think you're, I don't think you're close to that. Naomi's, Naomi's pretty resilient. Oh my God, um, we got to try. I appreciate you, Bill. All right, we got to try harder. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thanks, Bill. Um, I'll stop there, thanks. Thanks, Bill. So real quick, I think that'll cover updates because we really want to conscientiously make sure that every meeting we leave, uh, 15, 10 or 15 minutes for the board to uh, have the opportunity to put forth matters of importance uh, to them so that we're making sure we're collecting uh, information that will help guide us to making sure our agendas are as complete as possible. Thanks, Matt. So does anyone have anything they would like to add? Once again, I can't see hands or anything. So if people don't speak up, I wouldn't know. Well, my biggest discussion is making sure that there's uh, adequate IT uh, or laptops or whatever for all of the members of the board so we can participate in an equity uh, equally, and we don't have uh, any division, so on, just because of access, you know, to the work that we do. So that might take more discussion with uh, RHA and or maybe LEC can help. Uh, but that would be something that I would want to make sure that we follow up on. Absolutely. I, I have not heard of anybody who, who's asked for additional support there, but I'm happy to. I um, have recommend. several times, Peter. I, I okay. have several a times dangerous to response. You're seeing. It's, it's been requested several times over several months by various members of the Continuum of Care Board. We mm -hmm. have not yet followed through of connecting folks with the technology that would help them on the ground uh, work better with us. Okay, I appreciate that, Marvin. I will canvas the board and go, and we will work on each individual case where folks have raised their hand. Christy, I see your hand. Well, I thought Jonathan was working on that, and I uh, never heard nothing back after we canceled the retreat. Yeah, I haven't seen Jonathan at all, so that was my thing too, Karen. I was hoping for something. I'm working on a laptop that's about to die. So yeah. oh, we'll, we can we'll follow work. up on this and get this done. We will work with our partners at the LEC um, to, to get this done. Okay. Thank you. My apologies. And some of us need a, assistive technology or an adaptive version of that to fully participate, which I, I have that. said in the past. Got you. Correct. I hear that, Christina. Yeah. So is there anything else for today's meeting anyone would like to bring forward? I guess, um, are we developing like meeting structure for the subcommittees at the next meeting? Uh, I think, Peter? 
So let me bring out, uh, so we're gonna circulate and ask for membership. There, so two, two committees are meeting and they have a structure. So, you know, obviously we reaffirmed that. Governance, it seemed to me that Marvin had, uh, a, that the, that the co-chairs had accepted uh, Kelly as the, Dr. Kelly. Yeah. as the, right, on the governance, right? I don't think right. the others, we would, we would need to create structure for those and then we would have the, um, so maybe what we do is we'll have those brought back and nominate folks for those, okay? Unless you want to take, you know, you could reopen that agenda item and take nominations now. But but since we lost so many members, right, you can't really take a vote. So well, Peter, what's the timeline looking like? Because we're constantly every meeting pushing stuff back. I'm wondering what is our timeline structure and how long are we here for? Because I don't want to run into deadlines and oh my yeah. goodness you know we got to get this done or else you know there's going to be a new coc and blah 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 you know i need to know ahead of time what the tunnel looks like at the end where the light is and, yeah. yeah go ahead so the request is set up the pit redesign uh workshop within a couple weeks of today uh once we can get an email circulated from that work, the structure for the ongoing pit committee for the next year can begin. Uh, and for the system redesign, since it has never existed, it would be my thought that it would be easily next month before we have some ideas of what that's going to entail because we haven't received any reports or uh, for reviews or evaluations of ongoing programs, either HUD or local that we can build off of to say, this is working, that's not working. So uh, that's kind of the timeline on those pieces. But how Getting do we know, like, excuse me, how do we know, like for one, how long we remain in the seats? And for two, if there are any, um, um, any funding that we have to approve or talk about down the line that we're going to be faced with. Uh, there's no like calendar or so I will I be I will be really happy to uh, work uh, direct with you and answer as many of those questions with the information we already have and then we can get answers for anything that we don't have a block because this portion of the meeting will exist from forever. Uh, we will always be able to bring back what wasn't clear and the information that we have. So I got those questions. Some of them we already have answers to, and sometimes it's technology, once again, that doesn't allow us to be able to actually view the information that has already been circulated and or shared, so. Okay, there's some other people with their hands up, thank you. Okay. So Karen, I also just wanted, like certain calendars are, are like predictable, like the, the annual HUD NOFA cycle. We don't know exactly when they'll send it out because it changes every year, but we know sort of around the range of it. And the application will be due in the fall. You know, it's usually in at the end of September. Last year was November because of, uh, you know, COVID and so forth. So what we'll do is put together what the the likely calendar would be for the HUD NOFA and circulate that out. And then there was a couple of moments like the point in time counties in January annually. You know, there's certain kinds of moments that, you know, those things are out there and we'll add those into the calendar. So you can just look at the, at, you know, the whole arc of the calendar. The other thing I want to put, um, you know, what we've been doing is posting the meeting schedule each month, but I want to do the, the year's calendar in advance. So everybody sees, you know, it, it operates at the same, you know, it's the first Wednesday of every month, but it's easier when you actually see what those dates are. So we'll put that out as well. Okay. Thank and if you. You're going to do, if you're going to do a calendar like that, plot the implementation board, plot all of the subcommittee dates, plot the work group dates. If you're going to do a calendar that detail, then let's put out all of the standing work Great. And times in which they meet on a calendar that everybody can yeah, see. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. We'll do that. Okay. 
you know, I build heard a, we had let's hands build a on. skeleton structure and then build on it later. You know, start out with the skeleton and then build the muscles and then build the skin, but have some a skeletal structure to start with, and then we can build on it as we go, rather than trying to build the pieta or the Sistine Chapel at first. Well, a lot of work's already <laughs> been done. Uh, we just are now talking about refining it and sharing it in a fashion right. that folks can actually use on a month-to-month, weekly basis. Agreed. Are there uh, other I, hands? I don't see any other hands. So I may, I may, um, uh, Sorry, I don't see other hands right now, Marvin. Had his leg oh my God. So that's, um, okay, that wasn't us. No, that was, I, sorry, Bill, I had to drop the mute hammer on you, but. Um, uh, Let's okay. call for work for this uh, meeting. I'm entertaining motions. Anybody want to move to adjourn? A second. <laughs> well, I just want to make sure that whoever Bill was talking to is okay. <laughs> I, I thought I heard something about someone's leg being amputated. Yeah. Did you hear that? Did I, yeah. did I hear that right? I heard that. that yeah. I, I thought maybe we wouldn't want to intrude on people's private so businesses private. with yeah. the way I was hearing yeah. I'm done. Thanks, In the public everybody. forum. Yes. Yeah, that's I expect hard. to hear from I you, Marvin. Sure I expect that to get information okay. on a calendar and uh, the list of information and Peter from you on uh, whether or not we're going to have another uh, list of committees to join, and then also uh, Owen's um, workshop, right? That's Next correct. Week. All right. Thanks, All everybody. All of those and the technology stuff. Happy so. Groundhog Day. It's going to snow, so it looks like winter's for another six weeks. I. We've been moved. It's been moved to adjourn, everyone. Thank you very much. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Tamara. Hey, congratulations on your 20 years, Marvin. That's awesome. Yeah, that's Ooh, amazing. Thank you. That's yeah. very you got cool. more years than I do, Marvin. <laughs> okay, right on. Very cool. Congratulations. That's what Good. You do. And welcome Good to you. the team, Danielle. Danielle. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you all Bye. soon. Bye. Thanks, folks. All righty.